It's 1040 AM KDGR 106.9 FM. We are so glad to be here with you today. And I came with a surprise. Of course, those of you who are on our social media, you can see who's here with us. Uh, but if you're listening on the air right now, we have the, uh, let's see, Reverend Dr. Bishop. <laughs> Travis Green is here. My goodness, my goodness. Hello to you, sir. What's up, my girl? Listen, first of all, so honored to be on your show. Number one gospel show, you know, the only gospel show in Dallas, but the, oh, the number one in Texas. And uh, so, so cool to join you today, Autumn. I appreciate it. Awesome. And we thank you so very much for joining us. So you have, we're going to get right on in because you got some new music. Now, we've been really jamming to Tent Revival. Like, yeah. We've been really jamming the tent revival and yeah. we love it. And well, of course, everything that you have done, everything that you have touched, pretty much, we we love it. Uh -huh. uh, but you have some new music being released today. Yeah, today, today on Good Friday, Expect Impossible. So we did a live recording on uh, New Year's and um, it was just real cool. We redid some of the songs from the tent revival project, kind of remixed them um, and then also uh, introduced a few new songs. But uh, it's Fetting Impossible is everywhere music is sold or streamed today, and we're doing a whole album release concert tonight at the church, Forward City, and so it's so much fun, but um, Tent Revival, man, it's such a fun song. First of all, thank you, Autumn. Thank you, KTGR and Dallas for getting behind the song. Um, if you've been, you know, with me for a few years, you know, it's kind of my thing to remain edgy and kind of not really fit a box, and so I have to thank Radio for making space for that. Uh, because even, you know, we go back eight years, nine years when Intentional yeah. dropped, there was really, you know, it was nothing like it on radio. And no. the same thing with really every song you waited it was kind of like, is this rock and roll? What's happening right, right. now? You know? <laughs> and um, but you you guys show so much love to all of that. And then here we are, you know, with Tent Revival. Um, and, and the same thing, I'm kind of staying on brand with myself and you know, my writing style is just, I think, unique and fresh and not really looking to try to um use anything else as a template other than what I'm hearing from from God and that's what this song is. Wow, wow. You've released so much good music. You have made a name. So I feel like at this point, whatever you release, we're we're just gonna support it. It doesn't matter. <laughs> well I think it, it I mean that's amazing. First of all, thank you. But I, I know I, I mean I think part of what I like to do is leave um you know, PDs and, and personalities and different people at radio. I love those meetings where it's just like, hey, does this even fit? You know, the format. <laughs> I, 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 so I kind of, I go for that more than I go for, oh, this is easy for radio. Um, yeah. We're like, I, it's I, Travis. I mean, well, <laughs> duh. <laughs> I think it continues to push our genre forward. And I mean, there's so many people who, who always did that. You know, if I model anyone, it's those who have gone before me, Kurt, Fred. Uh, you know, um, Donnie's, you know, when, when these guys were coming through uh, and even, even, I guess the class after that, you know, the, the, the ties and Israel and Mary's, you know, uh, yeah. when they were, when all of them were coming through, it was like, okay, we haven't heard this before. Yeah. And, um, you know, and that's what I'm after, man. I, and, and that's what I, 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 I kind of wear that on my shoulders. Like, Hey man, we got to continue to push this forward and not be afraid to, you know, try new things and experiment with different sounds. And, you know, so that's what this record is. It's a lot of fun. Our church loves it. Forward City, for those who don't know, is the name of our church here in South Carolina, Columbia, South Carolina. And um, so the project is with myself and, and Forward City. And uh, we're going to keep music coming to you. Wow, that is so awesome. How are you balancing your, your professional life, your church life? That's got to be a lot. Um... <laughs> I got this running joke that, you know, I've never cheated on my wife. So it's just a joke. But my joke is I'm married to church and my side chick is music. Like I, <laughs> um, I just, you know, for me, man, I love ministry. I love, uh, there's nothing like seeing people's life transform and continue to move forward and seeing them uh, mature in God and seeing baptisms. And I mean, that to me is just, I live for that. And I think music for me has just always been a tool. And so mm -hmm. that's why I love writing music that that can be sung in churches, um, because I, I love to just put makeup on the bride of Christ and help her continue to, you know, offer a great worship and a, a great experience to God. And so that for me is, I mean, I'm a, I'm a church boy, man, through and through. Yeah. Music is just something that I, I can do. That you can do. Wow. Now you've worked with so many 
artists you've collabed with with so many people who is that dream artist that you just one day if i can work with them man i think i have you know i mean i did a song uh during the pandemic with kurt franklin and john p key and that for me is the highlight for me probably my career you know i mean it wasn't a number one radio song but you know radio did show it some love uh, but more than just that it was a it was a dream come true for me. Uh, you know, there are two massive influences for me. When I say I'm a church boy, I mean I'm a church boy. Meaning when people be talking about, you know, all the songs from the 90s and 80s, I, I just don't, I don't know what they're talking about. You know, I, I kind of got, I got in there. I was, once I graduated high school, I was able to kind of listen to some <laughs> some more stuff, kind of broaden my, you know, and I was yeah. a church boy too. So I was able to kind of get into Outkast and TI and that kind of stuff. That was, that was Man, I was grown. You know what I mean? So <laughs> my whole 80s and 90s, I don't know nothing but gospel. Nothing. Music. Nothing. I don't know nothing but gospel music. I cannot name the members of SWV. I have no idea. No idea. <laughs> <laughs> wow. No idea. So for me, John P. Key is my Michael Jackson. You know, that is my, yeah. you know, when we talk like Fred Hammond is not somebody just like, oh, that's just a guy from gospel. Man, I went to Fred concert when I was in high school and took his water bottle home that was on stage it said, it are you serious you took the one <laughs> yes he left it on stage i grabbed it and i put it on my dresser for like two years it's a true story and my wife grabbed it and my uh, little sister grabbed his hand towel and you probably were there you know <laughs> i, I could have been did, did you know, Fred know this did you nah, tell him this he don't know you know what i mean but that's i mean i was that guy man i was like a real gospel fan there was no Plan B for me. It was all things gospel was all I ever wanted to do. So um, yeah, that's a true story. I almost forgot about that, but that actually did happen. I literally took his water bottle to the crib and was just like, and anybody who came over, and they probably all thought I was weird. I was like, that's Fred Hammond water. It's like the water bottle. It's the like towel. it's like just a little left. <laughs> I listened to that and that's all. So you know, these guys to me doesn't mean when you talk about like. Michael Jackson and Prince and whoever else is, you know, like Yolanda Adams is my Whitney Houston, man. You know, these yeah. are my, I don't have any secular influence greater than my gospel influences. So being able to meet them and being a call or text away is a dream. Anyway. That's well, how do you feel? How do you feel that you are now that person where someone would come and take the water bottle on the towel? That like, that's you now. It still hadn't caught up. Like it's still, I'm still, um, uh, I still haven't bought the hype, you know, and I think what has helped is I'm surrounded by very just solid people, man. My yeah. wife, my wife, although, you know, she's stunning, Dr. Jackie, and, you know, she's just taking the world by storm. She's from a small town in Georgia, man. At the end of the day, she's probably going to choose Wendy's over Ruth Chris. At the end of the day, like, we're just like, just chill man you know like for us uh, uh playing spades is as great as you know flying to hawaii we just never got caught up in the hype of any of it now i think being surrounded with people like her my mm -hmm. mom my whole squad um and I, I keep an environment of um i mean even at church there's a there's a culture of honor but also mm -hmm. a culture of like it just ain't that deep, man. We can like, I'm, I'm all right, man. I could carry my own water bottle, you know. And so I love that. Yeah, that that, that you, has helped me. Yeah, that is so great, and and I love the fact that you um you honor your wife and yeah. you you do it publicly. So that yeah. that's all the way, all the, the way. Secret good. sauce. See the secret sauce to all of this. <laughs> what other um family or friends, or what are some more of your support system that you're surrounded with? Yeah, so my uh, my god brother, who I, I mean, I pretty much uh, raised him. You know, I brought him in as a teenager. He moved in with me. Uh, you know, he's a sound engineer at our church. Um, my wife's college roommate, best friend, is the chief of staff. And, uh, you know, I mean, for those who don't know, Forest City is the fastest growing church in South Carolina and probably yeah. and maybe in the southeastern region um, of the states. We've had in the past, just the first quarter, over 600 people join. Uh, this year. And so, um, I mean, it's it's crazy what God is doing at this point. And it's so weird, too, because, you know, we were small way longer than we've been a mega church. So it's still weird for us to walk in and like there's people serving and we have no idea. It's my first time ever seeing you. And you're like, you know, serving like a leader. Yeah. And I'm just like, 
Hey, what's your name? You guys, <laughs> no, I don't know anything. So all of that is still new for us. But a lot of the people who are just kind of core and down and a lot of the leaders we've done life with for ever, you know, and so yeah. um, that doesn't make that makes it fun as well. And then even with um, Forward City, you know, the, the, the group who is singing, I mean, they, you know, many of them have just been with us. One girl who's like one of the, the main leaders. She's been with me since she was in college, you know, from wow. the very beginning before we ever had a building, you know. And so the list goes on and on and on. People who just kind of been down. The guitar player and the bass player started the church with me. We put a sound system together in my house, you know, seven years ago. Um, and so um, uh, it's family. It's real cool. We all do life together and experience mm -hmm. the highest of heights and even the lowest of lows. When you talk about tragedy, the like people, family members dying and we just show up for each other. And um, it's, it's great to do life with people like that. I always ask artists who are, are leading churches, how do you deal with, for example, you have a choir there, you have praise teams there, and uh, being so great yourself, you know, sometimes, you know, everybody ain't professionally uh, <laughs> trained or, you know, so how do you handle times where it's like, okay, they're not on point, oh, uh oh, bad notes, uh oh, what has happened? Do you kind of pull back a little bit and let them find their way? Yeah, there's a, there's a ton of grace that you have to apply uh, to it to give people opportunity to even grow. It's something I just always have to remember. Uh, I think people around our age, Autumn, like we we just, man, we, God really gave us a great opportunity to figure it out. You know, yeah. the time that we kind of came up, when you talk about the 80s and 90s, like, you know, this was before musicians got paid. So, yeah. you know, musicians, musicians didn't start getting paid until the 2000s. You, know, you, had, to <laughs> you had to love it. You had to love it. But then you just had to love it. And there was a long line for the drums to be able to get, you know, to be able to play during offering. So it was like, man, I'm just going to learn a different instrument. And that's how I learned keys, you know, growing up. But back then, I wasn't very good. But, you know, no one got paid. So you just kind of got in where you fit in. And I, I make that joke, but I think now, unfortunately, uh, with social media and with um, even the, the how fast church is growing and, you know, the resources, um, I, a part of me kind of miss, and I want to be light with this because I don't miss the amateurness of volunteers, mm -hmm, but I do mm -hmm. miss the heart of it, you know, yeah. and the opportunities that we're given. And so I think we had those opportunities early on because we just didn't have the resources to be able to have the best of the best. I mean, today, you know, I, it ain't as much as of a drain. I mean, those guys are rock stars. You know, everybody who's touching the instrument, everybody who's touching the microphone is, you know, that in, outside of our church, anywhere outside of our church, there'll be a big fish. Oh, wow. uh, yeah. Yeah, they would. They would be the answer prayer for any pastor. Anyone wow. who touched the mic at our, at our church would murder any other church like they're that. really i just think oh, about yeah. the intimidation because being an artist myself i would never come sing at your church <laughs> yeah you would yeah you would and, and we keep it light too you know so it's a lot of fun if you know if they do if there is a mess up or i, I think we have an environment of like or if somebody say something silly on a microphone setting it up you know we'll we have a meeting afterward and we'll just joke on each other and no one is like above those shots i mean okay. i walk up stage and they like you know, because I may crack too, you know, and so we keep a light atmosphere like that. But I mean, those guys are so good, man. They're so talented. My my job is not necessarily to help them grow musically as much as it is spiritually. And that's that for me is my metric for a great worship leader is not necessarily um, your musical ability, but your depth in the word of God and your revelation. Yeah. Do you have those that you are mentoring musically on the music side, on the artist side? Uh, I, I, what we do is kind of do it collectively as, as a group, you know, all of them, I think, have aspirations and the talent to to have solo projects. Um, I, you know, what's been great is what we're doing and me allowing them to, you know, we were able to perform Tent Revival at the Stella Awards last year. And so, yeah. and, and I, you know, I had them all there and I put, I, I wanted, I rolled out the red carpet for it. I wanted them to experience it, you know, um, and uh, I think those type of things give them the opportunity to see how I operate in interviews and see my flow and see. And then yeah. I use those kind of how Jesus did with his disciples. Like, all right, after all of the paparazzi, like come to the side, let me explain to you why this was so important. Let me explain to you why yeah. everybody matters. You never know who someone is, you know, let me explain to you why I moved the way I move. And um, so they're able all to really kind of say tuition 
and get the cheat code behind this industry. Wow. Listen, I'm excited about it. So whatever y'all have heard about Travis Green, it ain't true. If it's the bad <laughs> stuff, it ain't true. We just <laughs> talked to him right here. Hey, live and in living color. All right, we love you. And we thank you so very much for stopping by to speak to little old us. Uh, go ahead and tell them again where they can find the music. Of course, we know it's coming out today. Go ahead and give your, your slurp. Yeah, yeah. I'm all over social media at Travis Green TV. Um, and I'll also tell you, man, check my wife out at Dr. Jackie Green. Her book comes out um, publicly released, um, uh, well, nationally released. It, it'll be out this month. Um, wow. uh, in a couple weeks and so uh, April 18th my wife's book comes out but uh, and it's called Permission to Live Free so she's Ooh. just amazing Dr. Jackie Green and then Forward City Music all over social media as well brand new album is out right now it is out and available called Expect Impossible and thank you so much KGGR thank you Autumn for supporting um, Tent Revival uh, man my I I Churches are catching on this song. It was so cool. I got sent a clip with Bishop T.D. Jake singing it at his church. Yes. Uh, well, and um, churches all over the country are singing it and loving it. And so that's because of, of radio. And so thank y'all so much for your help and for pushing this forward. Absolutely. Well, all right. Well, there you have it. We thank you, Travis Green. Much love. <laughs> yes.